Yes, and I've been telling you all day that Shannon McNally and Hot Sauce will be here in the studio, and, and since I don't lie, they're here. Hi. <laughs> Hi. How are you? Thank you all for coming in. Thanks. And uh, making the trek out to Brookdale Public Radio, 90.5 tonight. That would be us. It's nice I finally get a chance to talk with you. You know, I've been uh, playing you on the radio for a while now, you know, mm -hmm. for, since I've been here. Since, right. You know, longer, actually, at other radio stations. So nice. it's Thank been a you. long time, you know, and I've Thank seen you. you play a lot, so it's about time I finally got to say hi. 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 <laughs> yeah, like you and Jeff are like best friends, so it's kind of weird that, you know, I never get a chance to talk to you, but here you are. And uh, we've got Jameson back there playing the mandolin and the fiddle later on. we got Eric on guitar. we got Greg on the acoustic guitar. And, of course, Shannon McNally. Wallace, we stuck out in the the drummer you know, so. <laughs> he's, out in the van. he's out in the he's out in the van he's, he's guarding the van with his life so so anyway you're going to be down at the saint tonight yes. and uh -huh. it's uh day two of what promises to be a, a quite a long tour for you right? yes the rest of the year for the most part so mm -hmm. uh living out of a suitcase again all through the holiday season that's you that, got it well you, we will be home for the big holidays okay but uh you will be pulling like pulling in and you know for, the, stay, big, for the big day staying for a day and, then, and mm -hmm. uh packing up and, and you got and you got the kid with you so it's just like it's, it's a family it, adventure it's a family adventure so tell me about uh i want to find out first of all about you and I, I found this to be interesting that first of all that you wanted to you studied anthropology yeah and you wanted mm -hmm. to be College. i mean was that be, you were too young to know margaret mead or any of those people mm -hmm. But what prompted you to want to study anthropology? What were you aiming for? Well, um, I sort of stumbled upon it. I, my first semester freshman year, I uh, had this, I was going to be pre med. Really, I wanted to be a veterinarian, and uh, I got about halfway through my first. Uh, I guess it was inorganic or what's organic no inorganic right? whatever the first chemistry class is that they give you mm -hmm. and the professor gently took me aside and said i don't think this is the course <laughs> that is truly your path <laughs> so um the next semester i i just sort of looked through the courses and thought hmm, well that looks kind of interesting i liked social studies in high school and national geographic and mm -hmm. i thought oh well i'll still there and and the the, the first prof anthropology professor i had his name was michael billig and he's a wonderful professor. And the first day of class, the very first thing he said was, anthropology is for the person that finds everything interesting. And I thought, well. That works. I've got a library card. I like that. that that's nice. You know, you like to read, so that's good. <laughs> it was a great, great, great small private school. It was called Franklin and Marshall College. Yeah. And um, so uh, I was just, you know, it, it was just, a, you know, how getting into college is, 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 is an adventure mm -hmm. uh, of, on its own level. So. Exactly. So uh, I just could, the culture shock I'm thinking because you're from, from uh, Long Island where a lot of my relatives are from, from Hempstead and uh, to be out in the middle of Pennsylvania Dutch country I thought was kind of, must be <laughs> like, like must have been a really strange, like wake up one day and go, huh? Where am I? What is going on here? Yeah. <laughs> and you, you've, you used to live in New Orleans and now uh -huh. you're, you're in like a university town again. You're in, you're just in Mississippi. Just outside Oxford, Mississippi. Which is a booming college town. It is. It's, it's huge. Uh, there's a huge student population. I and don't I don't know think what it is. Most people tens of thousands. don't really realize it. I mean, I don't, I don't think they think of Mississippi as being a place where there'd be a vibrant music scene. Mm -hmm. a bit because of the fact that you're near Oxford and you've mm -hmm. got the, the college campus right mm -hmm. there. There must be a lot of places, a lot of people that come through town. So a lot of yeah, opportunities. Yeah, Oxford is a, is a jumping little town. It's kind of like the Austin of Mississippi. It's... Uh, it's um, it's got some real nice life. A lot of writers mm -hmm. um, and a lot of musicians, and um, just a it's a it's, it's a it's a wonderful cross between uh, sort of the rural world around it, and then this influx of of from the university. And well, you were down in New Orleans when Katrina was uh, hit, and yes. it just blew apart your place completely, right? Well, blew apart my life, that's yeah. for sure. <laughs> and what, what made you say, okay, well, let's leave, we, you know, got to get out of hit this town, so let's go to Mississippi. Well, uh, we just drove north. I mean, it was kind of like a, it's like a gut reaction. You just drive away. We could actually, we could have gone towards Austin or Houston, you know, mm -hmm. gone towards Texas or gone north, and my husband's family is all in Mississippi, so it was kind of, we didn't even think about it. We just... That was our evacuation plan. We just drove north, and we have family in Oxford. Feels like home now? Yeah. Oh, good. Yeah, it's a nice place. Although the suitcase is more or less home for you now, <laughs> especially the next couple of months. Yeah, exactly. And so tell me about the new album that, that'll be coming out, which will be available tonight for the first time. It will. You know, tonight is the grand... In fact, we have the world premiere of it ready to play here yeah. in a few moments, which yeah. is very cool. But uh, people will be able to pick it up later on tonight yeah. at the Saint. What can you tell me about it? Well, uh, I recorded it with a friend of mine named Mark Bingham uh, down in New Orleans at Piety Street re uh, Recording, and um, so it's a really nice record for me. It's a it's a, it's a it's a new adventure. It's a little bit more psychedelic than mm -hmm. any of my other stuff. Uh, and Mark, who produced it and arranged it, 
And I wrote all the songs with Mark. So it was a whole, you know, we sort of, it's, it's really Mark Bingham and myself. He uh, is a wonderful producer and arranger, and he's, he's done work on his amazing list of records. Um, and um, he worked with... Uh, uh, he worked with all the beat poets in the in the eighties, wow. and uh, yeah, particularly Allen Ginsberg, which has a connection to, yeah, the, to the title. Yeah, we did track. an Allen Ginsberg song. Most people know of him as a poet, but uh, I honestly had no idea he wrote a song. I, yeah, I don't know that he wrote that many of them. I and I don't know that it, that they were recorded. There's no recording of this one. It's just Mark knew of it, you know, and um, it, it's the it's ultimate ultimately obscure. Uh, <laughs> The worst part isn't always waking up exhausted with legs that feel like lead or that my memory is shot and every muscle in my body is screaming. The worst part isn't even that everyone thinks the problem's in my head. The worst part of chronic fatigue syndrome is missing my life. CFS affects more than one million Americans. Get informed. Get diagnosed. Get help. God, that's good. Thanks. <laughs> that is really, really good. That's brand new, the world premiere of the brand new Shannon McNally here on Brooked Up Public Radio 90.5. The nine, that is Memory of a Ghost from Western Ballad, the uh, the album. When will it be available for people that can't make it to the Saint tonight? Um, well, it will be, it's available um, online at the, the Louisiana Music Factory.com. They're the only people that have it right now. And but otherwise, it will be completely available. It be available at live shows for the rest of the year, um, and then it will be available um, everywhere online and then in all the stores and everywhere, January twenty third. So with this new album, it how did you go about? You said you know it was just you and Mark basically that mm -hmm. did it. What um, what came first, the idea to do it with Mark or the songs? Uh, the idea to just get together with Mark and see what happened. Mm -hmm. He and I had never really. I'd worked in his studio before. His it's a big studio down in New Orleans. It's a proper studio, and I I mixed Geronimo there, and I've made uh, other records there. But I hadn't actually ever worked with Mark as an artist. He had a couple of months of where he had he just kind of went out to this little cabin in um, out in South Louisiana, and uh, he was just shedding and. Uh, taking a little artistic vacation and mm -hmm. he's, you know, he had this great little studio set up and, and he sent out emails to a few of his friends and said, if there's anything you want to work on, I, I got time, I got my little rig here, come on down. Because <laughs> I had all these songs sort of just half done and floating around. Is that how, they, how you work, how your songs come together like in drips and like little pieces yeah, of it? Yeah. And then, so how yeah. do you remember like all of it? I don't. I write it all down and um, hopefully I don't lose the book. And uh, it, it, I just, it, they all just kind of gather. And then when I actually have time to sit down, they, they get finished pretty quickly. So that's what happened with Mark. Uh, we sat down and we just started you know, email. We were actually in the same room, emailing each other from our <laughs> computers. Uh, you know, song starts, a couple of verses here, or a chorus here. Oh, I think this would be a good bridge. I don't have the chorus yet. I don't have the verses yet, but I, this is the bridge. I know it. You know, crazy stuff like that. And uh, we just uh, started writing back and forth, and they they just flew out. We had five or six s songs um, that. And and the very basic tracks because he he works at a he like a small sort of Pro Tools rig mm -hmm. and and little, he plays bass great bass player and uh, then uh, every few months we'd get together and work on it some more he'd work on it when I was away and then uh, you know he sort of had the luxury of a giant studio mm -hmm. and he and he kind of pulled these big sessions together and we did about four or five days of full sessions which was really nice and. Um, and it just kind of kept going, and we just didn't, you know, we just kept working on it from afar when we had time. It took about a year. Well, uh, we uh, the rest of the guys in the band have been sitting patiently with their yes. instruments strapped around, so let's uh, put them to work here. What are you going to play for us? Uh, let's do uh, Thunderhead. This one's uh, basically about uh, about my daughter getting born. And brand new Shannon McNally here on Brookdale Public Radio, 90.5 The Night. Last 
just way I choose Looking forward to the blood and pain Feel it coming down like rain Washing over and through my veins Come the thunderhead Moving down the path Hear the thunder here Break the silence and light Now I can complain Find words for all I've seen Find some peace inside the stream This is Robert. Is, is Lewis next? This is how things could be if everyone realized that getting tested for colon cancer could actually keep them from getting it. Bring it on, Doc. It's one cancer you can avoid. You guys are great. Thank you. Thank you. Talk to your doctor about getting thank tested. No, and no, for no, a free information you. kit, call 800-ACS-2345. This is the American Cancer Society. watching a world premiere of a song on a radio. That's very, very cool. This is new from Shannon McNally here on Brookdale Public Radio 90.5 The Night. 
one of the many cuts that are on the new album, Western Ballad, which will be available tonight at The Saint, and then uh, basically you have to wait until January to buy it. Pretty much. Pretty much. So uh, now that you're now that you a mom, that's like a full-time job. And then, you Oof, know... It's a um, double job. Yeah. It's um, two jobs. And then, you know, you're, you're, run, shift. you're running the band. <laughs> yeah, you do you do a night shift all the time for like the like next 18 years, I guess. And um, you're doing, you know, then you're running the band and yeah. you're doing all this stuff. Yeah. I, how do you find time to do anything? Yeah, my iPhone has become an extension of my body, but uh, <laughs> you multitask and you just get real good at like when you do something, you do it and it's done and then you move on. At least that's the way I do it, you know. But I have I have quite a bit of help. My husband travels with me mm-hmm. and we have a, um, a full-time nanny that, that comes out on these long runs with us. Otherwise, we stick to places where we have lots of family and, and immediate friends. <laughs> well, it's going to be really, I mean, think about it for your daughter. It must be cool. She's going to see the world. You know, yeah, and you she's know, before been she gets all over to, the country. Yeah, before already, she gets to kindergarten, she's going to know more about this country <laughs> than most of the teachers. So that'll be uh, that'll be pretty interesting. You It'll know? be interesting come school time, that's for sure. Yeah, really. Yeah. So how's being on the road different now? This is uh, now that you're carrying along a two-year-old as opposed to a few years ago when you were just out on the road in the mm-hmm. van. Well, let's see. It, having the baby on the road actually makes it a lot nicer, I think, in, in some ways. Um, maybe you know, it might not have been fun when I was real young. But at this point, it's kind of what's keeping me interested in going and doing it because she, 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 um, you know, you can't, you can't mess with certain things when you have a kid and a little, a little one, they need to sleep. They need a healthy environment. You, you, you make really good choices. You have to make much better choices. You have to, you have to eat well. You mm-hmm. have to stop frequently. You have to do things like go to the park, get out, walk around, play with her. Have a life. You have to have a life. Instead of know. just being in the van it, driving yeah. for so 20 hours. So it breaks hours. the cycle of get in the van, drive, get to the club, eat, set up, sound check, do the club, you know, do the show, have something to drink, go back to the hotel, go to bed, get up the next day, do it again, and keep doing that. And that real that's what burns you out is because you just, it's... You know, it's it's actually a very regimented life. It's it's just as regiment. It's actually more regimented in some ways than getting up and going to the office every day mm-hmm. because you're 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 really trapped out there. You know, you're trapped in your little space shuttle. And well, it's really it's true because I mean, all the time that I spent out doing that, they were always like, it must be exciting to be out on the road with a band. I'd be like, not really, <laughs> you know, because after after the first few days, the whole the whole it's excitement work. level of it goes away. It's real hard work. Yeah. And uh, I mean, you can have a lot of fun if you. You know, I, you know. If, I guess once you're once you got a lot of money to deal with, <laughs> I imagine it could be a lot more fun. And people are really waiting on you hand and foot and taking care of every, your every need, want, and desire. But uh, that's not really our, our situation. So, um, <laughs> so we work pretty hard out there. <laughs> Have you noticed a, a big difference in in, uh, in the way you, that you write now that you're a mom? Have you noticed that uh, the, the mm. song topics or the things that are running through your brain a little bit different now? I think so. Uh, you know, you, what? Thunderhead. Thunderhead. The Thunderhead's yeah. a big deal. Yeah, there's one. Yeah, they're, they're a little bit more sweeping. I mean, I've always sort of written sort of in a sort of a sweeping mm-hmm. style. I don't get real stuck on trends because they move too fast for me. I, I, I don't know they're here and then they're gone, so I can't even comment on them. So, but, uh, so Which I is think, for all of our benefit, basically. Which is for that all you don't of do, our benefit, yeah. 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 Uh, you know, I think maybe they're, it's a little more sweeping. And I think it just makes you a better writer because... Uh, you just, you know, it intensifies how much you love, and 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 how much you see, and um, and for for me biologically, it just it made my senses so acute. You know, my sense of smell is like forget about it. I can, which must I, make being in the van so much more fun <laughs> now after an, on a nice long road trip, huh? Yes, I'm very sensitive to you know. Guys, you heard that right? She's very sensitive to smells. So. <laughs> The odds of a child being in a fatal automobile accident are 1 in 23,000. The odds of a child being diagnosed with autism, 1 in 166. The odds say it's time to listen. To learn the signs of autism, visit autismspeaks.org. Look. 
is a, definitely one of the perks of, of uh, being on the radio is I get to play my favorite stuff, like that song from Shannon McNally off the Cold Water album and the Bohemian Wedding song. It is 23 minutes after 3 o'clock. For those of you who expected to hear Jeff, no, he doesn't have a cold. It's me hanging a little bit longer because uh, Shannon McNally and Hot Sauce were happy, were uh, nice enough to come in and uh, spend some time with us. Uh, prior to tonight's show, down at the Saint, doors open at 7.30. It's an 18 to get in 21 to enjoy an adult beverage or more. And uh, there'll be several opening bands as well. Do you know when you're going to be hitting the stage? Is, have you, you figured? You know, I don't know. I think it, um, last I checked, it was like 9 o'clock. Yeah, it'll be relatively early. Cause, yeah, but I don't it's know. It's a school night. You know? It's a school night, right. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know for sure, but I think 9 o'clock is a safe bet. Yeah. And so, uh, would you care to play us yet another song? Yeah, yeah, we're gonna um, uh, we're gonna do a Greg Spradlin song right now. Cool. This is one of my very favorite songs, and uh, I met Greg, who's he's playing with us to now. He's playing bass with us on this tour, and uh, but I met him through Jim Dickinson as well, and uh, he's gonna kick this one off. Nice. It's so sad when the night comes No hiding moves you Gotta keep on rolling on It'll blow right through you Honey proof on a nightstand Ray Charles and his Ray Bands Mr. Johnson's love's in vain I'm all out of blue oh, That was a great song. Thank 
great. Really cool. Congratulations, Greg. Thank That's you. on uh, the new album. This is a brand new album from you, right? Not brand new, but it's new. new. It's new. New to me. So yeah. there you there you go. Yeah. It's it's, <laughs> <laughs> it's new to a bunch of people. There so you go. And it's it'll, new. <laughs> and it'll be tonight. It'll be available tonight down at the yes. Saint as yes. well. And that's a track off of that performed here live in the studio mm -hmm. by Shannon McNally and Hot Sauce. Thank you so much for coming in.